Hey guys, it's my first video in quite a while, I decided I'm going to take on a new project that's not really something I've done before. I've got this meteorite and I'm going to try and make some rings out of it. So you can see, we started off with this nice chunk of meteorite. It's from the same Chen meteorite fall in 1967 in Russia. It's a palisite meteorite and it's got some really nice patterns in it that I'm hoping will show up in the final ring. First step was to cut out the ring blanks. So you can see I've got some nice diamond tip drill bits and uh, yeah, just put it on my drill press and cut away. Uh, it turns out this was a much longer process than I thought and you can sort of see that the drill press table was even flexing a bit because of the amount of force it required. But eventually I managed to get all the way through. Because I'd only cut the disc out for this one, I then had to hollow out the middle. So I used progressively larger drills to drill out wider and wider holes until I had a wide enough hole to start working with and close to the final diameter of the inside that I wanted. You see it looks a bit rough at this stage, but it really looks quite nice. Next step was to put it in a lathe where I kept doing a couple of passes inside and occasionally checking the diameter to make sure that the inside was going to be the right diameter. Once I had the inside done, I tried to put it on some homemade ring mandrels, but as you can see, the first ones I did were sliding around a bit. What I eventually went with was two sort of cone-shaped plugs that were squeezed together between some nuts, which worked really well to get the outside done, but I couldn't actually make the ring any skinnier sidewise because then the plug was no longer actually pushing on the ring and holding it in place. So once I'd done a couple of passes and got it to what I wanted, I decided I'd make a new type of ring mantle. So this one, the diameter on the end is set to be just smaller than the ring and the rest of it's going to be an expanding ring mantle. So I cut it down to shape and um, yeah, gave it a nice sand then you didn't see it but I used a bandsaw to cut some crosses across it. Then I used the same plug as before to try and to sort of expand the inside and really jam it up against the ring. This worked really well because I was able to access at least one side and all I had to do was take it off and flip it. One of the problems I had was I was running at too high a speed so the mandrel was wobbling a bit which made it uneven but I eventually realized that if I slowed it down, it becomes a nice, you know, the right sort of speed. It doesn't wobble and it worked well. I really wish I'd, you know, planned a bit ahead and bought an expanding ring mandrel. I was looking at Patrick Adair designs. He has some amazing rings and that was really the inspiration for these ones. And uh, yeah, I was gonna buy the expanding ring mandrel from his website, but unfortunately didn't get around to it and the shipping time for Australia would not have got it here in time. Yeah, take a couple of passes, taking some off the outside, some off the edges as well to get nice and uh, the right sort of dimensions and some, a nice small ring. The last couple of passes were only one thou or 0 0.025 mil, trying to give it a nice finish. I then went over with sandpaper, starting at 180 grit then 240, 600 and 1200 grit. I did want to go even finer, but this is about all I could get at short notice. And finally, after all the sandpaper, I used, a, at least held a polishing wheel with some polishing compound and tried to give it a nice finish. You can see how the outside is Finished fairly well, but the inside's still a bit rough. So what I did, I wrapped it in some electrical tape to protect it and put it back inside the lathe. I then used a bit to just take away some of the edges so it wasn't so sharp on the inside and tried to do a bit more sanding, but it was really hard to reach inside. The next step was just to sand off the edges, try and get the edges as smooth as possible. Then after that came probably the most nerve wracking step of the morning. So I didn't quite have the right sort of acid. This is ferric chloride that I'm using, which is used for etching circuit boards, 
Whereas this should have been, I think, of muriatic acid or nitric acid. It didn't quite, it didn't quite get the same sort of detail I was hoping, but it did at least, you'll see at the end, show the nice pattern of the ring. So you can see here, you get a few of the actual meteorite sort of components or meteorite features where you see the gradients between the different parts composing the meteorite. It was a really nice look. And if you guys have read the thumbnail, you'll probably understand what this is for. But uh, Charlotte, you wanna come in and like say the good news? So yeah, she said yes. Mm -hmm. I did say yes. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Yes, you know. Well, that's not a great start.